welcome to The Rob Burgess Show. I am, of course, your host, Rob Burgess. On this, our 50th episode, our returning guest is John D. Domenico. You first heard John on the 42nd episode of this podcast. John D. Domenico is a professional actor, writer, performer, host, creative, and celebrity impersonator. For the last 25 plus years, he has been recognized as one of the busiest and most versatile corporate entertainers in the industry. He has worked all over the world for some of the largest production companies and their end clients by creating a unique form of infotainment. John is originally from the Philadelphia area and now lives in Las Vegas. John attended East Stroudsburg University and graduated from Temple University with a BA in speech communications. John spent a year as a PR intern for U.S. Senator Arlen Specter. He overcame a severe speech impediment to become an actor, impersonator, and performer. John has written and performed at national and international sales meetings, product launches, trade shows, and award shows around the globe for AT&T, SAP, Sony, and SC Johnson, to name a few. John's specialty is seamlessly integrating his ever-expanding cast of celebrity and original characters into any meeting element by writing content-driven comedy that delivers and amplifies the key messages of the meeting. John has appeared in feature films including Meet the Spartans, Disaster Movie, 30 Days of Paranormal Activity, and Not Another Celebrity Movie as Donald Trump, The Love Guru, and Dr. Phil. John is the official Donald Trump on Conan 12 appearances, Red Eye on Fox News 21 appearances, Trump Cast, Fox and Friends, and Chelsea. He has also appeared on The Today Show, Inside Edition, Good Day New York, and many more. John is the only Donald Trump impersonator in the world to appear on The Today Show Australia, The Today Show Ireland, and This Morning Britain. D. Domenico's Trump has been profiled on ABC News Nightline, NBC News, Vice Media, CNN, CNN Money, CBC, USA Today, Yahoo News, BBC Business Matters, Channel 4 Britain, and has been covered by several major print and online news outlets in the U.S., including the New York Times, Washington Post, L.A. Times, Ad Week, McClatchy, The Hill, Miami Herald, Philly.com, NJ.com, Star Ledger, and many more. D. Domenico is the only Trump impersonator to appear in multiple segments of Fox & Friends for a cross-promotion between The Apprentice and Embassy Suites with the approval of the Trump Organization. John's Austin Powers impersonation has been recognized as the best by People Magazine and has been profiled on MSNBC. You can also find an extensive annotated list of as many media appearances as Donald Trump, which I'll be posting under this episode on the podcast homepage. On February 25th, Trump announced on Twitter that he would not be attending the annual White House Correspondents Association dinner on April 29th. On Wednesday, Alec Baldwin appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to discuss the possibility of filling in for Trump at the event. I'm sure you hear it all the time, but I love it when you do President Trump. I think it's the greatest... <laughs> It's so good. I never, I never, in, my wife will tell you, I never imitated him or had anything to do with it. Lauren called me and said, you want to do this? And I go, no, I don't want to be Trump on TV. Because any time you have any kind of mimicry, it's usually somebody that you appreciate. You have right. some appreciation. Right, right. So they said to me, Trump, and I didn't hate Trump. I just said, ah, I don't want to do that. And Tina and Lauren kind of pushed me, and I do it. And you've seen SNL. And the moment the stage manager takes me to the, my mark for the first dress rehearsal at 8 o'clock, I had no idea what I was going to do. Really? I mean, literally, the moment I walked out, I just said to myself, he, you know, eyebrow up. I tried to stick my face out, <laughs> my mouth out. I was in the makeup room. They're putting my wig on. And I literally, it was like a scene from, like, a mental hospital. <laughs> I'm getting the wig on me, and I'm sitting there the whole time going, China, China, <laughs> China. I'm trying to do it again and again. It's so that it becomes, uh, so you don't think about it. You just do I'm it. shocked by that because I figured it was something you'd been doing. Oh, that's what I should say. I worked at it for months. So. Well, no, it's even more impressive that it wasn't in your I didn't wheelhouse. Really know. I didn't really know. But there's a guy uh, who's on the internet who, I mean, it's interesting how there are people who, now that he's not going to the White House Correspondence Center, there are people who are lobbying to play Trump at the White House Correspondence Center. You are not one of those people? Well, I wouldn't say I'm not lobbying, but I mean, people, people would say, would you do it? And there's a couple guys on the internet who are like, no, please, I'm the only man oh, who yeah. should play Trump. Yeah, no. And they're really kind of, there's like a lot of Trump competition. You I got sucked it. into this. No one will top you they'll on this. They'll tell these guys this. Hey, well, until they say, I suck. Nobody even knows who these guys are. Don't worry about it. I you can't suck. say bad words That's because a... I gave it up for Lent. But, the... yeah. <laughs> 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 but there's one guy lobbying 
It should be job. whoever the president hates seeing do it the most, and that's undoubtedly you. I say so. Wouldn't you love to be <laughs> in that room with him, watching you do him, and how mad that must make him? Well, I mean, it's like to me, it's like he's. So, when people say to me, "What was your whole gag?" and you know as well as I do, because you're very funny, that you can kind of suggest the voice or suggest the way they look, but you got to try to think of who he is. And I've said this countless times. Like to me, Trump was someone who. He's always searching for a stronger, better word, and he never finds it. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you do Trump, he'll sit there and go, these people, they're great people, they're fantastic people, and I just want to say working with them was... <laughs> and, he calls, and then he goes, a fantastic experience. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he's a <laughs> He's a a good <laughs> President Roger. He's a very limited thesaurus. He does. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pamphlet thesaurus. <laughs> Do you fear running it? Well, I guess you don't run into the president. I guess it's not like... Uh, I'm with my assistant at, at, at Dean and DeLuca in Manhattan getting a cup of coffee. I run into Tony Kushner, the playwright. Uh -huh. And literally, dude, there's all this stuff that's like churning in the media. And Tony Kushner turns to my assistant and goes, is this your taster? <laughs> like, what? Like, am I assuming going to try to rub me out? Yeah, I'm no, playing. I don't think he'll do that. I think, in fact, in a way, I think you're safer now because he would obviously be the first suspect if you were to be, if you were to be killed. Don't worry, I will launch an investigation. It'll start right at the top. Let me just do another season of Match Game so I can leave my kids some money. That's <laughs> work. You got to get the Trump family you on Match Game. Have on Friday, CNN's Jeannie Mose filed a report on the controversy. It's the impression... I deeply apologize. It's left an impression on the American psyche, but if you think Alec Baldwin practiced for months... Wrong, wrong, wrong. Baldwin told Jimmy Kimmel that at his first SNL dress rehearsal... I had no idea what I was going to do. I tried to stick my face out, in my mouth out. I was in the makeup room, they're putting my wig on, and I literally, it was like a scene from like a mental hospital. <laughs> I'm getting the wind on me, and I'm sitting there the whole time going, China, China. Five months after that first skit... I think it's her snips. There's the whiff of money. Baldwin is co-authoring a book entitled You Can't Spell America Without Me, described as a so-called parody in Trump's voice. So-called. Excuse me? So-called, so-called judges. Impersonators may also be judged. After the real Trump tweeted he will not be attending the White House Correspondents Association dinner, impersonators started lobbying to play Trump at the event. You are not one of those people? Well, I wouldn't say I'm not lobbying. Respected impersonators like Anthony Atamanik... We're gonna make America great again! ...are urging their fans to lobby the Correspondents Association. The hashtag MakeAnthonyTrumpAgain sprouted. One fan created a presidential directive urging the WHCA to invite Tony. The agent for another well-known impersonator, John DiDomenico, likewise lobbied the Correspondents Association. DiDomenico recently won a competition on The View. I cherish women. I cherish women. I must. I married three of them. So if the Correspondents Association decides to replace the real president with a pretend one, may the best Trump win. Are you kidding? According to China. It's pronounced China. Jinimo, CNN. Number four. <laughs> New York. And now on to the show. Is this better? Yes, yeah. Sorry, I barely heard you before, but I can hear you now. So Good. cool. How's how's it going, man? Good. I you know, it's it's not as insanely crazy as it was before, <laughs> but it's um you know, it's certainly interesting. Yeah, yeah, you for know, sure. These Baldwin comments were, you know, kind of unexpected shot in the arm. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so, what was your what was your first reaction when you heard that Trump was was not going to do the White House Correspondents Dinner, though? Well, I was like, well, that's interesting, considering the fact that the, probably the reason he's president <laughs> was the night that he went there, and you know, Seth Meyers and Obama kind of ripped him a new one. Uh huh. And I thought, wow, that's that's interesting. If 
he's not going to be there. Well, maybe I could be there in his place. Right, because it sounded like that the correspondents were just going to do it whether or not he showed up. It didn't seem to matter. So if they're going right. to do it and anyway. In fact, then in fact, I'd already reached out, you know, because I'm on Conan. Mm-hmm. I reached out to TBS because not only am I on Conan, I'm also did a bunch of um, – digital shorts for TBS as Trump. So I reached out to their uh, publicity department because Samantha B well over well over a month ago mm-hmm. said she's having her own um not the White House correspondence dinner. Oh, okay. That same night. I thought, well, and this is before he wasn't going to be there. And I thought, you know what? I'd really love to be in on this. I've done a lot of stuff since I worked for, you know, since I did the Trump cast. I've met a lot of people, mm-hmm. a lot of reporters, and I've been to Slate a number of times. I thought this would be like a great opportunity. So I had started pursuing that. And, um,. Didn't really get anywhere because they're still putting that whole thing together. And then, you know, Trump said he wasn't. And I thought, well, shit, I need to reach out to um, uh, I think Julie Winstead or whatever mm-hmm. her name is, the woman who who's the executive director. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, everyone and their mother, I think, had the same idea. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and, you know, and I didn't do a hashtag, but I did start tweeting towards um, the White House Correspondents Association. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then Baldwin and I and I it was weird because I don't watch Kimmel that much, but I was literally I was watching it, and the whole thing with Baldwin and Kimmel went down. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> that was that was pretty wild. I mean, for uh, for starters, he he in that same interview said that he basically didn't do any preparation either. That was the that other was thing. really insulting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like well, really I, well. I mean, that's yeah. not a joke. Oh yeah. And um, and I uh, and it, what really kind of I mean, he said that. I mean, I think prior to that, Kimmel said those guys are nobody. Mm-hmm. No one knows who they are. But I know for a fact, um, through I have I've had some meetings in LA for some projects, and those people have said like, "Oh, Alec Baldwin, you know, he knows who you are. He watches your stuff." Mm-hmm. This goes back a couple of months ago, mm-hmm. and I also know that um, Alec. Bal- I mean, uh, Anthony. The other guy, mm-hmm. he's, um, he he watches him too because he obviously copped to the fact mm-hmm. that he watches both of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And by the end, he's saying, "Fuck those guys." Yeah. I thought that was Which a little. That was hilarious because, um, and this is pretty common knowledge. And um, but you know, Anthony was the one who coined the phrase "China." Uh huh. Yeah, and that and that was just a rip off of his thing. So I felt like between the two of us, because he really hit those guys, mm-hmm. and I thought he's he, that's that's us, of course. And then specifically to Anthony's, um, you know, when Anthony posted that he wanted to do it, he said that oh, it's uncouth, but I'll do it anyway. So I, I, I mean, I, it was, you know, uh, I was like, oh, this is the most fascinating thing in the world. But what really blew my mind was because how many, you know. How many between Fallon and Conan and Kibble and Samantha B and this thing and that thing? These moments just kind of dissipate. Mm-hmm. Well, the next day there must have been five articles, mm-hmm. and then like and a half, a, and then the um, you know like uh, Vulture did one, and the AV Club did one, mm-hmm. and then Variety did one, and then CNN called me the next morning. And said, Are you, do you have time for an interview? Because we know that he was talking about you. <laughs> yeah, and right. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I, like somebody else called for another interview, and then Politico called. So it was kind of amazing, and it was, and it was great. I mean, I don't take anything negative from it. It's all, it's all good for me. Mm-hmm. You know? But you- I, kind of doubt, I, I doubt, I mean, if his hat's in the ring, I really highly doubt that they won't go with him. Uh-huh. You know, because the whole thing's a star 
upset at evening. So. Sure, absolutely. But I mean, I, I you're not upset at like Anthony, for example, for wanting to get in too. I mean, you'd be you're doing the same thing. So it's like no, you're not trying to elbow anyone else out necessarily. You're just advocating for yourself and instead of yeah. And, and you know, the funny thing is, the word lobbying mm-hmm. is such bullshit. Mm-hmm. Everybody lobbies because that's what you do for a role on a TV show sure. or in a movie. My eight, you know, like hey, we read that this role is open, mm-hmm. and I don't mean necessarily a you know a Trump thing, but you know, in this case, that's what it is. Like when I booked the, the wall, you know, you saw the wall commercial. I think mm-hmm. I sent you that when they're looking for a Trump guy who can stand in front of a crowd and improvise and be funny. Guess what? My agent's going to go after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah, you're not going to let that go. I mean, that's how you right. get jobs. Oh boy, that sounds perfect for me. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, but, yeah, what did you – I mean, does it seem like he's just kind of protecting his turf? I mean, it seems like he's so high up on the food chain. It's kind of amazing how much vitriol there he has towards uh, – you know, he called you the guys on the Internet, too, which I thought was funny as opposed to, like, people well, out working. And, 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 and I think – I don't know if you saw what I posted on Facebook, but, uh-huh. I, you know, <clears throat> I doubt he – I ever saw this, but I said, you know, I'm not just some guy on the internet. Mm-hmm. I said, I've been on Conan O'Brien since August of 2015, and I've made over 35 appearances. Mm-hmm. I said, also, I've been on Red Eye since August of 2015, and I've also made 35 appearances on that. I'm also the voice of Donald Trump on Trumpcast, and I've done 80 episodes of that show. Plus, I'm the official voice of Donald Trump on Chelsea Handler, and I've done four appearances on that. I've done three feature films. I've done over 100 live performances Mm -hmm. around the world. I'm the only Donald Trump to be on Australian television four times. I'm the only Donald Trump, American Donald Trump, to be on British television and was flown over to appear on This Morning Mm -hmm. because I was performing over there. I'm also the only Donald Trump to be on um, The Today Show in Ireland. And there's a lot more of those. I'm also the only Donald Trump who's been on Indian television. So for him to see these guys on the Internet, it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, Like, what do you have to fucking do (laughs) to get recognized in this business as a comedian? Right, like you're just somebody in your bedroom, you know, doing yeah, something like on I'm YouTube like some, or something. Like, yeah, I'm, some, I'm like the guy that Trump refers to with the Russia hacking, some <laughs> fat guy in New Jersey sitting on his bed. And it's like, I'm fucking killing myself right. working seven days a week. I did over 250 interviews. Uh-huh. Last year alone, and I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking, ABC profiled me on an episode of Nightline. Mm Mm-hmm. NBC spent two and a half days with me traveling and did a profile on me. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Vice spent two and a half days with me. Mm -hmm. It's like, what the fuck? (laughs) You know, right. some guys on the internet, give me a fucking break. I'm in LA having meetings for major shit. It's like, give, it's like we're so close on this, mm-hmm. and we're just so demeaning. Yeah. <laughs> Last night, Tom Shalou, they did a, a shout uh-huh. out for me on Red Eye. Uh-huh. And one of the comments, uh, not on my Facebook page, but on the actual video post, somebody said, and mind you, I've got a, I've got a pretty long runway. I've got 12 years doing Trump, number mm-hmm. one. With Red Eye, I've got a pretty decent exposure because it goes back to August of 2015. Um, but somebody said, I've tweeted to Alec Baldwin about John Domenico and he blocked me. And I thought, oh, I've heard this before. Oh, wow. That's so petty. <laughs> Alec Baldwin doesn't want to hear it. <sighs> right. But it's like he kind of just walked into this role, and now he's like acting like he's owned it for you know however long. So. He's been writing a fucking book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the next thing I was going to mention. Yeah, twelve years <laughs> I've been doing this. I've written hundreds of scripts. Mm-hmm. Hundreds. Yeah. Is Alec Baldwin a writer? Did I miss a page in this <laughs> fucking story? <laughs> yeah, not not to my knowledge. I'm, I'm not aware of his literary output. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. He's a big star. He's a movie star. But it's kind of like, it, 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 it's, it reminds me of, did you ever work in a, in a big company? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Years ago, one of the, I mean, you know, I, when I got out of school, I had to have a job, you know, mm-hmm. doing acting. But I worked for, like, a, one of the Yellow Pages um, regional companies. And I'm just, you know, I came up with an idea for this, an idea for that, and I came up with an idea for, like, a monthly newsletter. And, and every time I came up with an idea, mm-hmm. somebody else took the, somebody else took credit for it above me. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, it, it, it kind of, you know, for people like us, and you know, luckily because of the internet, we're, we're out there. You can't you can't deny us a certain amount of exposure. Mm-hmm. But for Alec Baldwin to just walk into it, and by the fucking way, <laughs> everyone forgets the fact that Daryl Hammond, who was the Trump on that show for years, got shit on and pushed aside for Baldwin. Hmm. I didn't know that. And I don't know why no one makes an issue of that. Nobody. So instead of bringing him back, they brought uh, Alec Baldwin on over Well, him. do you remember November 5th of um, last year? Not this past November 5th, mm-hmm. but it was Karen Killian, um, the real Trump, mm-hmm. and Daryl. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then all of a sudden, when they started next season, when Trump had really gained momentum, uh-huh. they were like, you know what? Daryl's a star guy, and he's been with, he's the longest cast member in history, but let's fuck him. <laughs> and let's bring in the single biggest gun we can, who's never done Trump in his life, doesn't like Trump, and obviously hasn't worked on The Voice. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's just going to wing it. On his own account, he didn't know what he was going to do until he got to the podium, and the fucking light went on. Let me tell you, that is like the antithesis of not preparing. Oh, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> not the antithesis. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understood what you meant. <laughs> I'm there with you. But, um, Sorry, I'm, I got like, my, my ninth cold this year for oh, traveling. That's okay. Um, but I saw you were on the uh, the View, and you just won a competition on there, right? Yeah, I won a competition. Who was judging that? Daryl Hunt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, and, and they chose from 10 Trump impersonators around the country because that's part of the Laugh Factory competition. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? And I'm not a you know I'm not a competition. It's great to win. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But I mean, like, uh, I like I said again, like I don't know what the fuck you need to do. It's I I've been doing this for twelve years. I'm the second person ever to appear on national television as Donald Trump in two thousand and six. Mm-hmm. I'd already been doing him two years by then. The only person before me was Phil Hartman. Mm-hmm. I just, I just find it, I just find it, I mean, it's all very humorous, because if I was further up, or on a situation comedy, or I was a movie star, this wouldn't even be an issue, Mm -hmm. but it, it, but the the lower you are down the food chain, Mm -hmm. the harder you have to fight, and the more work you have to do, just based on volume alone, volume of work, Mm -hmm. I should be much further beyond, you know, much, much further ahead. Mm -hmm. But I'm not credited on Conan. I am credited on on Red Eye, but Red Eye's on Fox at 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I'm not credited on Chelsea Handler. Uh, The Trump cast does credit me, but it's a podcast for Slate. You need to be a news junkie to be watching that. But things like the wall commercial, the voiceovers, Mm -hmm. um, the movie, I mean, all that stuff's out there. And Mm -hmm. I'm posting stuff like two, three times a day. I did a bunch of those... um, I did um, Australia second. I did America first, Australia second. I did the official one mm-hmm. for that country through the uh, weekly show, which is the John Oliver show in Australia. Mm-hmm. So I'm, 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 you know, I'm well known. Right. It's just I'm not well known. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. But I think people that know, you know, who the Trump impersonators are know what what you've done and they they see you out there even if the the larger public doesn't cuz I I do I do see that you get, you know, some you know, maybe underground, maybe maybe not the right word, but you know what I mean? It's a little less yeah. than than him, but I I think I think you're you're making track. I mean, it is frustrating, you're right, to, to see somebody like that just kind of waltz in and be like, "Hey, I own this now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and there's days like I just think to myself, who do you have to blow in this? Head? You know, I mean, just tell me. Right. <laughs> I just want to know who it is. Sure. But uh, but you know, and 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 I, I and, but all of this is, I say all of this, but at the same time, 
the mere fact that Alec Baldwin said this kind of elevated my mm-hmm. status, and people stepped up for me, and that was really that was really nice. Sure, I mean that, for example, that CNN piece wouldn't have existed without without that. That that it, then exactly was just another exactly. signal boost. And, so. and and you know, and Tom doing his bit, and then yesterday um, somebody messaged me early in the morning and said, "I just saw you on MSNBC," and I was like, "What?" Mm-hmm. And they said, yeah, 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 just ran on Joe Scarborough. I was like, the fuck is it? I didn't even know what it was. What they had done is they had resurrected that story that NBC did on me uh, October of two years ago where they, they mm. followed me around. So they just started replaying. Um, it's called Trail of the Tapes. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, that's great. Just all this stuff's in the can. Uh-huh. So. Now, uh, I, I saw a thing on your uh, Twitter here about the person that plays Melania with you. Mira, uh, Mira. Yeah. So, uh, do you work with her every time you have a Melania, or is well, that? Uh, yeah. The 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 few times. Yes. The, 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 this is what happened. Um, uh, we've been. I've been trying to incorporate a Melania for well over a year because my feeling was, as a as a just a marketing and business guy, it's like, okay, if I can nail down my Melania, get the photos done, I can be ahead of the game. Because mm-hmm. when that moment comes, I want to be be ready. Um, uh, and and then I was working with, started the process out here in Vegas, and it just didn't come together. And then a buddy of mine who's a photographer in New York, uh, I was there in the summer, and he said, you got to meet this, you got to meet this woman. I go, really? Is she an actress? She's not really an actress. As a comedian, she's not really a comedian, but she's, she can kind of naturally be Melania. Mm-hmm. And her name was Mira. She came to the studio. We met that day, mm-hmm. and I thought, "Wow, she's re- she's almost she's too pretty because she's prettier mm-hmm. than Melania." Uh, and uh, but we we went outside. And we shot a bit. I don't know if you saw, saw the bit where Trump di- Trump directs traffic. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> she was my Melania for that. Okay. Cool. And then we did a couple of other things, and then. I told my agent, uh, as Trump calls came in, let's see about trying to fold Melania in. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, with these types of things, it's always, it's an additional expense. So it was a little tough in the beginning. But then we did a, um, uh, w- the guy who, one of, one of Trump's business associates, uh, Alvin Siegel, mm-hmm. his, uh, his, he had called me, I had done, and his birthday, which happened to be on election night, mm-hmm. he's a huge Trump fan. He won. I hosted his birthday party in, in Montreal, of all places. And then when he won, the, his his people reached out to my agent again and, and said, "Hey, we're going to have a um, we're going to have a uh, an unofficial." inaugural party in Boca Raton at our house at our property down there. Hmm. We'd love to have John do his do a you know, do his bit. And I, I they called me and I said, Great I said, Would you like a Melania? And they said, That would be incredible. So Mira came with me and Mira's not a writer and she kept saying, like, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? And I was writing literally writing the material in the dressing room <laughs> which isn't very good, but we were, had just been it had been so insanely busy. And she said something to me in Israeli, in Hebrew. Mm-hmm. And I said, You know what? You're so much more comfortable in Israeli. I said, Why don't you speak to the audience in Israeli? Mm-hmm. And and she said, great. And I told her what to say. And my bit was, my setup was this. I said, you know, I'm I'm so excited to be the president. It's going to be tremendous, I have to tell you. And a lot of people, I tell people that Melania is Slovenian, which is true, but she's Jewish. Melania is Jewish. So I wanted to, now that I'm president, I can tell people that. <laughs> then she spoke in Hebrew, and it's just, it was just a funny bit. And it blew their mind. Yeah, right. They just, they just weren't expecting it. Sure. That kind of killed her that crowd. <laughs> and she, and she kind of worked that night. And I'm always trying to get her in on every job. And, <clears throat> you know, but, you know, again, for the clients, it's another person. It's another hotel room. Right. Flight. And, Right, right. But, I mean, if you're going to spring for it, it seems like it'd be good to get a package deal, you know what I mean? No, it's, so. it's great. It's great. And um, 
one of the issues is I think she's not like super defined mm-hmm. as a personality yet. <clears throat> so I think once that moment comes where she really defines her personality, speaking wise, I mean obviously we've seen her many, sure. many times. Mm-hmm. But once she chooses a um uh her cause, I think that will really help. And that'll also help with uh, you know, a couple of the people that I know. I've I've been kind of inundated with <laughs> Female performers going, I'd love to be your Melania. I'd love to be your Melania. I'd love to be your Melania. I get, I get emails all the time. Uh-huh. So, right. uh, which, which is interesting. And then when Mira posted her story, uh, I mean, didn't post it, like the, the, mm-hmm. I think it was the New York Post and some other people picked it up. She was inundated with guys saying, I'd love to be your Trump. <laughs> and I'm thinking, did you, did you see the story? It specifically said, I'm her Trump. So, it, it's funny. Everyone's trying to muscle in on everyone's territory yeah. on this whole Trump thing, which I find is hilarious. Right, exactly. Well, I think people see that there's, uh, you know, blood in the water or whatever, and the sharks come out or whatever. So. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, and one of the great things, that, and one of the reasons I, I feel very fr- free to talk about Anthony is, mm-hmm. his Trump impersonation is so different mm-hmm. than mine. Right. That I feel like we could literally work Together. Oh yeah. Because my my Trump is pretty much the Trump you get, mm-hmm. and I may even step back a little bit because some of the stuff he says is so outrageous. I can't even say because a lot of the work I do is is corporate and on normal like morning television because right. a lot of morning TV. I can't even say some of the <laughs> even the View cut out some of my comments about Avanka. <laughs> But right. Anthony is like what Trump's really thinking. Yeah, right. I would love to do the correspondence dinner the way that um, Bush and Steve Bridges did it. Do you remember that? Uh huh. Yeah. Because uh, you know, Bushy came out and hey, how you doing, everybody? Good to see you. And then uh, Steve Bridges basically did what you know, uh, you know, did another version of Bush. But I would like to come out. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, White House Correspondents Association. I see people are tremendous. I have to tell you. And then Anthony would say, you guys are horrible, horrible. You're scum. You're scum. You're the worst. I would like to mass murder all of you. Because if you listen to his stuff, it's so fantastical. But it's really like what Trump's thinking. You know? Yeah. So I would just, because and ours actually complement each other. Oh, yeah. A lot of people, and I've been told this, I've been reached out to, and I know it's happened to him because one guy, more than, more than one new Trump Trump impersonator has reached out to me and has said, I've stolen a lot of your act, you and Anthony. Mm-hmm. So I think they're taking from both of us because we're kind of a compendium of of Trump. I'm on one side of Trump and sure. Anthony's on the other uh, other side of him. So. Well, th- well, there's enough layers to the onion or whatever that you don't have to just claim the whole thing for one person or the other. I feel like, yeah, right. you're right. It's a different take on, on the same subject. It doesn't mean that there can't be both. You know what I mean? So. Well, yeah, and, 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 and just in the real world, in, mm-hmm. in the real world, you've got Trump, you know, I love women, I cherish <laughs> women, I have to tell you, I have to tell you. And then you've got Trump, I grabbed her pussy. I, gra- I, yeah. I went at her like a bitch. I went at her like a bitch. You know, but she's married. She's married. You know, it's like, this guy's psychotic. <laughs> exactly. You know? I need a tic-tac. I need a tic-tac. Anybody have a tic Bushy, you have a tic-tac? Yeah, you know? <laughs> Yeah, how how uh, how uh, terrible must uh, Billy Bush feel at this point that he's out of out of, out of work and and he trumps the president? I would be I would be incredulous. Like, what did I do? <laughs> All I, I, I was, was just there. <laughs> you know, at least the Nazis had. I was just taking orders. Yeah, exactly. You know, Billy Bush like, I, 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 you know, and you know, Billy Billy Bush, he knew when you listen to that. Uh huh. He knew the mics were hot. I mean, anybody who wears a mic all the time. Sure. Because I do events all the time, and you're very cognizant of wearing a mic. You notice. Uh Uh-huh. He didn't say a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. He just egged him on. Yeah, basically. (laughs) Yeah, he was just kind of along for the ride. With a microphone on, you know everything is recorded. It is. It just just happens. 
Yeah. Because they're always rolling sound. They're not always rolling video, but they're always rolling sound. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, people are like, oh, he was secretly filmed. It's like, I think he probably knew that lapel mic was there. <laughs> Can't imagine yeah. that was you know a why? surprise. Because it's attached to your tie and there's a pack on your waist. It's not by accident. Yeah. It's like having a colostomy bag on your side. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, I also saw that you were uh, on Russia tele- Russian television. Yeah, how did, how did that come about? Oh, listen, I have another one to post to those. They sent me two scripts. They said, we want you to do the official one, and then we want you to do the unofficial one. Oh. Great. They sent me the unofficial one, and the last line was, fuck America. And I said, I am not <laughs> going to say fuck America. <laughs> I will not record that line. <laughs> and they said, I said, here's what I'll say. I say, fuck your, because it said Russia first, fuck Europe, America second. I said, that's what I'm willing to right. say. I had to change a bunch of the lines. Cause oh, wow. Well. Like, I'm like, just, this is Russian TV? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, you don't have to have the, quite the same self-censoring uh, thing for uh, for them as you do for some morning shows, I guess. <laughs> right, right, right. And I just thought the, the bit is actually funny. I'll probably be posted a little later today. It's the unofficial one. And even it, what's really funny about the unofficial one, they remove the RT from the video. Really? Yeah. Which wow. I thought was, mm, that's interesting. And they put another, um, whatever you call those things, uh, another logo mm-hmm. on, the, on the video, on the overlay. Right. Huh. And, uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. But that, I wrote my agent back in the day. I said, did you read this script? <laughs> he said, no. She goes, I, I can't say this. Oh, yeah. my God. She was, like, she was like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, when somebody reads something for the first time and you hear them reading it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you didn't read this. Like, <laughs> it, it's basically pro Putin all the way. Oh sure, absolutely, yeah. right. So it's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I got a I I kick out of that one. So <laughs> that'll go up a little later. And um, I did a thing for uh, Danish TV or oh, Holland in Holland, uh-huh. and he just they just reposted that too. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting that a lot of people are. Um, a lot of people are in the same boat. They're like, oh, we already did this with John. Let's repost it and try to get some detraction out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. But um, what can people do to help you uh, get on the White House Correspondence Dinner here? Uh, I just, you know, use the hashtag uh, the Johnald, J-O-H-N-A-L-D, to the number two host, the Johnald to host. Okay. Awesome. Well, I, I certainly hope you make it, and uh, that would that would be awesome. Uh, is there yeah, any... it would be. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, <laughs> well uh, you got my vote, but um, yeah. is, is there? Uh, a... You know, I think that we could really sell it is if you know if if they go with with me and Anthony just. You know, side by side at two different podiums. Oh, that would be hilarious. That would be great. I would love that. But um, is there anything else uh, you wanted to promote here? <laughs> um, let me see. What, what's coming up? Um, I've got a bunch of you know, uh, just a, just a bunch of international bookings. Come, well, things are falling together. So just just the usual live corporate stuff, things like that. Awesome. You know, but you know, I promote my um, my YouTube channel. Okay. Because that's that's really what is coming down to is mm-hmm. you know people people finding my stuff and I'll put videos up now and within a couple of hours um, I'll have and this, these are not staggering numbers by any means but mm-hmm. you know to, to put a video up and within an hour to have three four hundred views is is pretty amazing that is. in a couple of days to have a thousand and I, I, it's kind of like wow this is I, I'm putting stuff up and people are finding it a lot faster oh yeah absolutely cool well I'll which promote is, that as well nice. yeah awesome yeah. Yeah, cool. so that's like youtube.com forward slash uh, Dido NYC, which is D I D O New York City NYC. So awesome. that, that's the first four letters of my last name. But, okay. Yeah, because honestly, I mean, <laughs> it's ironic what what Kimmel said, but that's really where I'm going to have to end up being. To, 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 
out even more. I am, I'm, we're working, we were, I was working with a set designer to build the White House press office in my house. Oh, wow. A mini version. And, uh, but unfortunately, I don't think Trump will ever set foot in that room. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. I, I really don't. He's going to do it. I mean, what, what, I forget what room, I forget what room he's been in for his press conference. Yeah. But he always has a bunch of shills. Uh, he quadruple, he doubles the size of the press corps. So there's a lot of people in there that aren't, you know. Right. To, to la laugh at the jokes and to, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. awesome. we all know how, how the press corps has always laughed at all the jokes of all the press <laughs> and applauded, too. Because that's what you want, an unbiased media who applauds and laughs. Exactly. You know, cool, man. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Talk to you right, soon. See you. Bye. All right. If you enjoy this podcast, there are several ways to support it. I have a Patreon account, which can be found at www.patreon.com forward slash Rob Burgess Show Patreon. I hope you'll consider supporting in any amount. Also, please make sure to comment, follow, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review the podcast everywhere it's available, which includes iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Facebook, Twitter, Internet Archive, TuneIn, and RSS. It really helps. The official website for the podcast is www.therobburgessshow.com. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thisburgess.com. Until next time.